Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Zizipo Zama Africa Busakwe. So, if you guys watched my first two videos, you may have picked up that I recently left my corporate job to go and study software engineering at an institution called um, Within Code. Um, so, yeah, this was after I'd had, um, you know, come to understand my career purpose to be to contribute towards the transformation of financial services in Africa through the use um, of technology, leveraging technology, if you will, um, alongside the application of mathematics, statistics, and psychology. So in line with Within Code, um, opening the applications for the 2022 cohort, I put together a three-part series where I share with you guys, because you're my faves, and I want you guys to flourish and go for all the things that you want to go for, including software engineering, if that's what you're interested in. So I put together this three-part series where I share, one, um, how um, I got bitten by the coding bug, two, um, the application process at Within Code and how I worked my way through it, or rather how I kind of progressed through it. And three, um, the strategies that I used to successfully get through the one week long, very grueling bootcamp selection process that Within Code, um, you know, holds as almost like the second final step towards the application process. I'm gonna be taking you guys through um, my basically relationship with tech and how I came about to um, embark on a journey to pursuing a career in technology. So let's take it all the way back to high school. Um, I did not do IT in school. Um, neither was I a child who was interested in like computers. I wasn't like a computer geek or whatever, but also, um, more than just not having been interested necessarily in computers, I wasn't exposed to, you know, computers. Yes, I had a smartphone at some point and I knew how to go into the internet and, you know, and access information, but I'd actually never had a computer of my own. And um, computers in my school were only reserved for people who did IT. So I never really interacted with technology at that level. Um, especially particularly computing in technology so no IT background in school never really had an express or explored interest in tech then I go to university and that's the first time I actually interacted with um, the idea of programming and um, um, computing in general uh, so yeah I remember when I was in first year I had to choose as an elective um, so an elective for those of you who may not know is generally in university you have your majors with which are the subjects that are core and are compulsory for the degree that you need to study and then you usually then have your subjects that are almost like accompanying your core subjects and those are called um electives so i had to pick an elective and as one of my electives i had to choose between um computer science and information systems so I remember choosing information systems because, um, you know, there was a lot of noise about how difficult, um, you know, computer science is. It's so grueling. Oh, my God, that course is chowing people and all of that stuff. And for me, um, I just didn't want to pick an elective that was going to chow me, you know, <laughs> especially because I, I already had my majors. So I was not trying to be shown flames by an elective. So I kind of made that decision, which in retrospect, I, I don't think it was the best. It was not a decision that was made on the right basis. I don't like the way I arrived at that decision. But anyways, let's move. So didn't do um, computer science, went on to do information systems, didn't really pick up an interest in coding or computers or that sort of thing. Um, graduated, applied statistics from the University of Cape Town, and I started working in financial services. Okay. So um, then this is when now I... I stumble into tech and I actually discover that I love tech. Um, I love programming and, and I love what I can do with it. So 
long story short in my job there were in as much as there were elements of my job that were exciting and interesting and really engaging but there were also part um parts of my job that were quite redundant and repetitive and um but it was important work that needed to be done but the way in which we were doing it was quite um repetitive like i said so i then along the way got inspired to start automating some of the repetitive um, aspects of my work um, so that I could have time to, 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 to allocate to other aspects of my work. Um, and I had the, the desire to do this for myself and then roll it over to my colleagues. Okay, so as part of doing this, I have no programming experience. I'm trying to automate spreadsheets in Excel um so that we can improve efficiencies as well as um you know reallocate resources to where they 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 could you know yield better more so i start um recording macros on excel and now as you will my macros start you know breaking and then when they broke i started going into the what's happening in the background um so when you're recording a macro, you just click a button and then the program in the background is tracing the steps that you are clicking on the keyboard or in the screen and it's writing a program that is going that is mirroring what you're doing with your clicks, right? So then my macros would break and then I wouldn't know how to fix them because I haven't programmed a day in my life. So then I started thinking to myself, okay, I mean I really want to do this, which is to automate these spreadsheets and to build cool stuff for my team. Um, so I might as well just learn how to write my own programs so that when they break, I'm able to fix them. Um, so then I was like, okay, cool. Now, instead of just defaulting to writing my programs in VBA, um, because that's the language at the back of recording macros on Excel, I then decided, okay, let me take it one step further and actually decide what um, programming language do I want to learn. So I was like, okay, cool. I ended up deciding to start with Python for a few reasons. It's a very widely used um, program. Um, so I knew that there would be a lot of resources and a lot of support um, on the internet. And this was going to be very helpful since I was going to be self-teaching. Secondly, um, when I was in university, when I spoke to my friends who were doing computer science, they did let me know. I mean, I knew through them that they were doing Python in first year. So I was like, okay, if a university decides that Python is, the, is a good first point um, for someone who wants to learn programming, then I, I, I can trust that on that basis. It's a bit of, the reasoning is a bit shaky, but let's, let's, let's just assume that universities know what they're doing. To a large extent so i was like okay cool if ucity offers their first year's um python i can trust and take python as the first year as my first year learning as my first language of learning and then also um python has many applications i mean it's applied across multiple disciplines including data science including artificial intelligence so i was like okay then this language is not a language that's going to be very niche and box me into one particular application and that's good since i'm kind of new to this whole programming world and i don't know what i'm going to want to do with it i the first very first 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 read resource that I touched was a video, I think it was a three hour long tutorial by Mosh Hamedani. It says Introduction to Python by Mosh Hamedani. I'm going to link it in the description box below. So that's how I learned how to study programming. And then the next step, um, okay, so after that, I was completely hooked, you guys. Like, I learned how to program. I started playing around with the spreadsheets at work when I saw that this thing works and that I can actually... Um, you know, build things that can literally help people do what they do um, more efficiently and at a greater scale, um, then I knew that this is definitely something that I want to do with the rest of my career. I want to do this better. I want to do this at a bigger scale and I want to get paid to do this. So yeah, um, also since I had done um, um, statistics, in university i also saw a potential future in data science so i was like that's it that's where my career is going and hence i said at the beginning of this video um my career purpose 
is to um, contribute to the transformation of financial services in Africa through the application of technology. And the next thing for me was how do I learn? And I went through several different um, paths that I could have taken. I could have learned on the job. I could have studied part time while I was working or I could have just done this thing full time. And I won't go through like the evaluation of all those three um, options in this video, but my decision was to go and study full time. Um, I'm a very thorough person. When I do something, I want to literally jump in with both legs, both like neck deep, yay, everything. I want to be absolutely obsessed with that thing and just my life must be about it, okay? And also, since I didn't just want a job, I wanted to actually, you know, um, I felt, you know, a, a passion for this. I wanted to make sure that I lay the foundation really nicely so that I can really go very far with um, 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 this programming thing. So decided I want to go into full-time studying. Okay, so rewind when I had just started my career, um, about a year into working, I had met um, a friend at a friend's birthday who we were just talking i had met him for the first time and um in our conversation we got to what we do for a living and he told me that he's a machine learning specialist i was like what is there okay guys please excuse my ignorance i did not know at the time what machine learning was um and then he told me and whoa like i was so fascinated by how technology was being applied to do all these cool things but i wasn't necessarily interested in those things so i let it go but i remember one thing from that conversation he told me that um he studied at within code i was like what is that and then he told me that this is a training institution that um, trains people to be software um, engineers and you know he told me like when he told me about the fact that it's a peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, meaning there are no teachers you literally teach yourself and you teach your peers and your peers teach you and he told me that um, uh, you know they don't necessarily require you to have a certain qualification or they also don't require you to bring your CV. Literally, they just want you to show up, show that you can solve the problem. And if you can solve the problem put in front of you, then that qualifies you to be a part of this program. I was like, I like that. That sounds like first principles thinking to me. It sounds like original, you know, original, just first principles, original, um, thinking to me and that appealed to me a lot I like that and he also told me that um, the program okay he didn't really tell me that the program was free but I learned I later learned that but I was just sold at the fact that for me it was project-based it was um, set up like it was project-based and it was peer learning and the fact that you know as long as you can do the job you were good for the job you know Anyways, so later on, then about a year later, a year and a half down the line, when I decided, when I found my reason to want to go into programming, a reason that was very personal to me um, and very purpose driven, um, then I, I was like, okay, cool. Hey, actually, there's someone who once told me about a thing code. And then, then I went actually and, and, and I actually literally after going to the website and really checking okay cool within code really exists it's a peer learning institution its tuition is 100 percent covered um it's actually connected to corporate sponsors that are going to where you are going to be placed for a job um afterwards after being given two internships with partners um during the program and these partners by the way are leading businesses in south africa i'm talking financial services um, asset management, banking, insurance, um, um, investment banking, um, software development companies, um, Jude. I've decided I want to be a software engineer. I've decided I want to do it full time. I've gone into the website. Now I'm literally going to go into the building and I'm going to talk to these people and I want to feel it and I want to see it. And yeah, and then so I actually literally walked into Within Code at the, cap at the campus in Cape Town in 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 waterfront and i was nervous i was like oh my gosh these people are going to be like why are you just coming in here you can't just barge in here but i went anyways and literally the reception i got was amazing i met 
if i didn't get the permission to mention his name so i'm not gonna put it up in this video but the head of i actually stumbled upon the head of um student performance i think yes and i had a chat with him and he was so kind and so friendly and so informative and he literally probably stood me for with me there for like a good 40 minutes where he was really explaining to me and um i actually spoke to my colleagues at rethink code before i made this video and they were like students are more than prospective students are more than welcome to come to campus and have a look and touch and feel and talk to people obviously i'm not sure how this is going to you know how covid restrictions are going to impact the extent to which people are welcome but definitely just coming to campus and interacting and and kind of um touching and feeling and experiencing a little bit of the culture and the space is is welcome so yeah anyways guys that's how i ended up um deciding to go with within code um yeah i didn't even look at other avenues to be honest not really because i was very sold on within code the next thing for me was how do i apply and how do i get in and that's what the next um video is going to be about in the next video i'm going to be taking you guys through the application process what are the different parts like what are the different steps in it um how i went about preparing myself for that as well as in the next video after that video i'm going to be then taking you guys through my experience of boot camp and um how i prepared for it um mentally um technically spiritually the whole vibe i really hope that this inspires um someone to take the leap towards um whatever it is that you feel it in your heart and in your spirit that you want to do with your life and with your career more especially and more specifically i hope this video inspires someone who's considering within code to take that step and actually get more information and actually go even further beyond that and actually apply and actually show up and you know and i hope that um the code will be with you and i hope that you will make it through the boot camp and that i'll be seeing you on campus um in 2022 and yeah may the code be with you mm -hmm.